In this video we're looking at OpenZeus 11.3 again, but this time we're looking at the GNOME version. Now when I did the 11.2 videos we never actually looked at the GNOME version, we just did the KDE version. So now we're going to look at the GNOME version. Again it's a lot similar to 11.2 just like KDE 11.3 is to 11.2 but again it's a bit more polished, there's newer programs and all that. The first thing that strikes me as odd though is that they've got this background from the KDE version but a relatively dark theme, it's not completely dark but I think that it would suit, suit it better if it had a dark background I mean of course you can just change it but the defaults do count sometimes and the icon theme's a bit grey I think these should have been dark green or something but apart from that I like the window borders and I like this colour here and the whole, not the whole icon theme is boring but some of it is, these icons are now one thing again with OpenSUSE is the GNOME menu that they have you click computer and there's the favourite applications now you would assume by clicking more applications they would come up down here and there'd be a little scroll bar or something for you to look through them on or this would become the size of the screen no when you click more applications it brings them up in its new window here which is a bit funny really because if they're going to do that why don't they just have a more applications button on the desktop or better yet just applications here you click it and this comes up it's just an extra click now to bring up a new window and when you group them it doesn't just show you the ones in the group it highlights them which is really pointless because they're already grouped anyway unless you're going to search for them but by default you're not so let's close that you can browse to your documents and places again when you do it you just open another window I'm not sure why they've done that they've just taken the GNOME menu the one with applications places and settings and they've put it in one window like this I mean of course it's nice having these little shortcuts as soon as you click but the ones down the side are system shortcuts which apart from shut down and log out you're not going to use that often anyway and to be honest what's wrong with the menu it's all here, you're just opening windows every time instead of it all being in one menu. I mean it's nice having the search function there, there but it just it seems silly. I mean you can you can of course add the old one. Traditional men menu. And there you go, there's the traditional menu. And you can get to the application straight away, but I really don't understand why that's there. Some people might like it. If you do like it, comment below and tell me why you think it's more convenient. I'd like to know why. I mean, maybe it is nicer to use, but I myself, I cannot understand why this is nicer than having the menu. And of course, because they're based off of each other, just with different desktop environments, the versioning is exactly the same for both. And if you really want to, you can install KDE and GNOME on the same system, but I don't recommend you do that. Unless you like having broken things, loads of startup services, and cute loads of Qt apps in GNOME and loads of GTK apps in KDE. It does work, but it's not very nice. One thing with the GNOME version is of OpenSUSE, and the same thing with XFCE, it's got the GTK version of Yast which it looks a mo lot more simplistic, it's exactly the same really, but it's a lot nicer actually. It, it seems to be a lot neater, which I've always said that QT apps look nicer, but in this case, this looks a heck of a lot nicer than the QT version. When you go on software management, for example, I really like it on here. It's just going to configure the repositories because I've never run it before on this install. And that's another thing, the package management is again a lot faster. I don't have any benchmarks to back that up but from using it and from installing programs it definitely seems to be a lot faster. Which is cool because it was fast enough anyway. It was one of the fastest with 11.2 which is good considering that opens used to be really really slow when I first started using it the package manager was really slow and there you go, it wants to install some stuff we're not going to let it but here you go, the GTK version of the package installer I just prefer it for some reason, I don't know why I mean even so it's changed from 11.2 but 
and it's very similar to the QT version but it just seems to be laid out that little bit nicer it really does anyway we'll close that the updates again it's just the same as the QT version but it's in this GTK design but I just think it's nicer even so with this it just seems that little bit nicer let's have a look at some default programs at least they're all laid out so I don't have to go through menus I suppose that's one advantage very similar to the KDE version it's just got GTK versions instead of QT versions you know where you'd have Amarok you've got Banshee and going back to Conqueror as I said in the um, KDE video now I know Conqueror is a file manager as well as a browser but you don't see the GNOME browser I think it's called Epiphany included with GNOME distros as well as Firefox I mean it just seems to me that Conqueror is obsolete now I really think it is and if people want to use it then let them use it they can install it themselves it's just Dolphin's nicer, it's more polished and I think it is default so I don't really think there's much point of Conqueror being there anymore unless you're going to use it to download another browser but if you're using a distro with repositories you don't need to do that anyway because you can just search repos unless you want the latest version but yeah it's not a lot different, there's not much else to show you really that's different but that was a little overview of it and the GTK differences we can't really go much in depth with this open source because it's going to be a lot like the 11.2 video we do there aren't that many changes but there's enough to make it a decent distro there's definitely more polish in there and it's faster as I said before but yeah again as for first time Ubuntu switches if they've been using GNOME I do recommend you give OpenSUSE a try but perhaps you might want to change the menus around I mean I don't really like that idea of having to click more applications and bring it up in a menu in a window instead of a menu but yeah anyway that was a little overview and I'll see you in the next video